Hey, Dr. Clark coming back at you with another example problem here. This time we're looking at a homogeneous linear system. And more specifically, we're going to have complex eigenvalues when we do this problem. So keep your eyes open for complex eigenvalues. And let's see how we get. So they gave us a, a linear system right here. We could rewrite that in terms of x, y prime if you like. Uh, that just turns it into uh, this problem here, right? Uh, x, y prime equals matrix times x, y. And of course, what this means is differentiating x and y is actually the same as multiplying x and y by this matrix, normally differentiating is a whole process, so that's what's going on with this linear system, right? And to solve this, we need to first find the eigenvalues and then the eigenvectors and then write our solution down. So if we look at our um, matrix one minus lambda four, negative five, negative seven minus lambda, and we take the determinant, that should give us the eigen values. Uh, so let's do that. So if you multiply that out, you get one minus lambda, negative seven minus lambda, minus negative five times four. A little bit of algebra here. I'm gonna get a lambda squared plus seven lambda, minus lambda, minus seven plus 20. So I kind of ran out of room, but put it up here. Lambda squared plus six lambda plus 13. And we need to solve that equal to zero. That is the, uh, if, we find, if we solve that equal to zero, we'll find our eigenvalues. Okay, so that doesn't look like it's going to factor. So I'm gonna run that into the quadratic formula. So lambda squared plus six lambda plus 13 equals zero. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that would be negative 6 plus or minus, what is that, 36 minus 52 all over 2. 36 minus 52 is negative 16. And when you uh, take the square root of negative 16, you will get 4i, all divided by 2. So lambda is negative 3 plus or minus 2i in this problem. That is my eigenvalue, or my eigenvalues. And now I want to find my eigenvector. So to do that, I take matrix, uh, which remind me is 1, 4, negative 5, negative 7. Matrix times vector x, y equals lambda times vector x, y. So that is the definition of an eigenvalue and an eigenvector, right? The matrix multiplied by the vector is the same as the number lambda times the vector. Normally a matrix will rotate a vector, but in a special case, it will just scale the vector, and that's what we're looking for. Uh, but the eigenvalue we're gonna use here is um, negative 3 plus 2i. And of course, there are two eigenvalues and two eigenvectors, but we're just going to find the first one first. Okay, if I multiply this out, I get 1x plus 4y equals negative 3x plus 2ix. That's the top row. And if I multiply the bottom row, I will get negative 5x minus 7y equals negative 3y plus 2iy. And it will turn out that these two are equivalent. Okay, if you found yourself a eigenvector, so those are equivalent to each other. They might not look exactly the same, but they will actually be algebraically equivalent to each other. Um, and in this case, what they say is that, so I'm just gonna take the top one. 4y is equal to negative 4x plus 2ix. 
or y is equal to negative x plus one half i x, which is really just saying that x times negative one plus one half i, that is what y is. So if you knew what x was and you multiplied x by this, you would get the y. And I just need an eigenvector. I need any eigenvector, right? So I can just pick x to be whatever I want and y will be whatever is left. So I'm gonna do that and I'm going to choose x to be two. And the reason I wanna choose x to be two is if x was two when I multiply that, that through, I'll get rid of that uh, fraction there, which I don't really like fractions in this case. So x is gonna be two and y will be, well, y will be two times negative one plus two times one half i. Two times negative one is negative two. Two times one half is one i. That is my eigenvector. So for lambda equals negative three plus two i, for that eigenvalue, that is the eigenvector. And it will turn out that I don't need the other eigenvector because I'm looking for real solutions here, not complex solutions. If I wanted complex, then I could find the other one. Um, now you could run this through Wolfram Alpha and it will uh, do this for you. So negative three plus two i, negative three minus two i, that's what we found. Um, now they found a slightly different version of the eigenvector here. They're calling this one, uh, let's see what they're calling it. Negative four minus two i, comma five, and you might say, well, that's not the same as what we got. We got two and uh, negative two plus i, okay? And those two are probably not equal to each other, but they are probably on the same line as each other. And in fact, um, one way I could, I could probably see that is if I just took that bottom one and multiplied it by negative two minus i and then multiplied the negative two plus i with negative two minus i. So essentially if I scale this vector, scale it by negative two minus i, right? If I just scale the vector, then my numerator will be negative four minus two i and my, den not my numerator, but my, my, x, my x value of the vector. And the y value, I'm gonna get four, and I'm gonna get negative i squared, and I'm gonna get minus two i, and I'm gonna get plus two i. These will cancel. i squared is negative one, so negative i squared will be one. And I, in fact, get the same thing. So it turns out these vectors, they're not equal, but uh, this one is equal to this one times negative two minus i. So it is just a scaled version of that one. So there's always gonna be with complex vectors, you know, some scaling that allows one to look slightly different than the other one or whatever. So let's just stick with what we have here, eigenvalue and eigenvector right here. And let's use that to construct our solution. So how do we use these to construct our solution? Well, we take e to the lambda t times our eigenvector, right? That will, that will equal a solution. And in this case, we're gonna have e to the, let me remind myself, negative three plus two i t. And my eigenvector was two comma negative two plus i. Okay. And if I start multiplying this out, I get e to the minus three t times e to the two i t times eigenvector. Oops. And I can use Euler's formula to say that e to the two i t is cosine of two t plus i sine of two t times eigenvector. And this will equal e to the minus 3t times a vector. Now I'm going to take this number, which is a complex number, multiply it by 2 and write it down. So on the top, my x vector will be 2 cosine of 2t 
plus 2i sine of 2t. Okay, that's fine. And then on the bottom, I need to multiply that number by negative 2 plus i. So let me take cosine times negative 2. That gets me negative 2 cosine of 2t. Okay, so that one is done. And I'm also going to take i sine of 2t times i. Because when I take i times i, I will get negative 1. So I'll be a negative 1 sine of 2t. All right, so that one's done. And then I will take cosine times i, which I haven't done yet. So then I will get i cosine of 2t. And I will take i sine times uh, negative 2. So that will be negative 2i sine of 2t. And that will be the end of the vector. OK. And what you should notice here is we have uh, imaginary parts and we have real parts. Okay, real parts and imaginary parts. So if we separate those out, make a little space here, we'll have the real part will be e to the negative 3t times the vector 2 cosine of 2t, negative 2 cosine of 2t minus sine of 2t. And the imaginary part will be e to the negative 3t times i times the vector 2 sine of 2t and cosine of 2t minus 2 sine of 2t, like so. OK, and what happens here is you get uh, here's one solution and here's two solutions. Now this happens to be a complex valued solution, but it turns out that if you take a complex function and split it into its real and imaginary parts, both the real and the imaginary part will be a solution to the uh, linear system. So that means I can write down my general solution as follows. So my yg of t general solution will be c1 e to the negative 3t times my real part, which is 2 cosine of 2t, and then negative 2 cosine negative sine. Okay, so that should be what we had there. That is one solution. And then we need another linearly independent solution. So I'm going to go C2 e to the negative 3t times uh, this solution right here, which is uh, 2 sine of 2t. And this part right here, which is cosine of 2t minus 2 sine of 2t. right there. Okay, and that is the general solution, the real valued general solution to this linear system that they gave us. Okay, and if it asked for the general solution, we would be done. But I believe the original problem gave us an initial condition of 3, 4. Yep, y of 0 equals 3, 4 right there. So let's go back and look at y of 0 equals 3, 4. Okay, so this should equal C1, e to the 0 will be 1. Cosine of 0 is 1, so we'll get a 2 there. Cosine of 0 is 1, so we'll get a negative 2 there. Sine of 0 is 0. So that is the first one. And then C2, e to the 0 is 1. Sine of 0 is 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. Sine of 0 is 0. OK. And what this means is we have a linear system. 3 equals 2c1. And 4 equals negative 2c1 
plus C2. And solving this, I think C1 will equal 3 halves. And C2 will have to equal what? Uh, 3 halves times negative 2 will be negative 3. So maybe if I do 7 minus 3, I get 4. And if we put those values in, 3 halves and 7, maybe I'll just uh, put 3 halves here and 7 there for C1 and C2. That is my solution to initial value problem right there, which is what they wanted. All right. I hope that's helpful. Uh, this is a longer problem because... Uh, we had complex eigenvalues, so it's a little bit more work to find the eigenvalues, a little bit more work to find the eigenvectors, um, and then a little bit more work to write down the two solutions because you have to multiply out these complex numbers. Um, but the process is, is the exact same as before. That is, it's just e to the lambda t uh, times c1 times the eigenvector, um, and you know it, you get two solutions that way. All right, so I hope that was helpful and we'll see you next time.